My name is Kitty Lucien and this is Melody here in Bali. At Nirvana Strength, we are lucky enough to teach this class under the sun and we'll be leading you through an acro uh, beginner's class. So take it super slow today. If you don't have a spotter, which is someone who is doing after the person on the floor and also the person on top, which is called flyer and lace, um, just take it slow today. Do what you feel feels good. The most two most important things, safety and also playfulness. If you're new to acro, sometimes it can feel slightly overwhelming. So really always come back to playfulness and safety. So we're going to take you through a short warm-up just before um, we're going to add on and show you the foundations and the sequence of a beginner's acro yoga. Yeah. So let's just start at the top of the mat. And then we're going to nice and wide and have the feet distance apart as well, the shoulders back down. Just draw the ribs in and just make an inhale in. Exhale, we bring it into the chest. Roll through the spine, bend the knees, and walk the hands out. And just really think about retracting from the shoulders. Spread your fingers nice like and wide, index through the face of the voice. Walk the hands back, bend the knees, and roll up. And again, take a deep breath. And exhale, roll through the spine. Walk it out. Hold it again. Really protecting from the shoulders. Now here, we want to keep our shape, but just think about shifting the weight to one side. So maybe you're just coming to the little fingers, or maybe you might even be able to take the hands out. Same on the other side. We'll get that. Then the knees. One more time. Take a big breath. Okay, so walk now. And if you have already tried in the body, just try and just think about seeing if we can touch the shoulder. The core shoulder pads, nice and slow. So keep in the shape, try not to open out the hips. Walk the hands back when you're ready, then meet and roll them. Take your right arm, reach up to the sky. Okay, well, sweep the arms, hinge the arms at the middle and to open. Other side, bend the knees in. And you will. Roll the chin to the chest, walk it out. Hold it here, back position. Going for eight short pads. So you just see how slow can you go rather than going as fast as you can, how slow and mindful it's your movements. And remember this embodiment because this is what you'll be practicing on somebody's feet later on, or maybe you will be the base supporting someone. And when you've done your eight, go your hands back, bend the knees, maybe sit down into your squat, and roll up. And again, finish the chest, roll it down, three and five, one left. So we're going for 12 shoulder taps. Really. Firing up the legs, sweeping the knees. How slow can you go? Whilst maintaining straight arms, shoulders over your knees. And we'll get back when you're ready to bend the knees and roll. Right hand reach up to the sky and, and switching the arms. Last time, other side, inhale, and exhale, roll it. Oh. And just roll out the shoulders, shaking the legs, and then we from the leader into our next step. So for the next exercise, um, you're going to find your partner. They're going to turn around, actually, and you're going to place your hands on their hip. Now, the idea here is for hip to jump with all of her bite. She's going to try to jump as high as she can, but my job is to hold her down. And we're gonna go for 15 to 20 jumps. You ready? Sort of. Are you? <laughs> go for it. One, two. Now, if you are a really strong person, when you're standing in the same position as me, you wanna give your person a chance to at least be able to jump. If you are a smaller person, then you really want to use all of your strength to hold your person down as much as you can. 
I think we're about at 15. Yeah. It's probably very warm already. Are you feeling warm? <laughs> so have, your, have a go, have a try, um, press pause and then come back when you're ready. Good, okay. Well, next drill. So for our hands, actually, so the best position uh, is to, one of you will decide to have your hands externally repeated. That means you have your hands facing out. And I'll have my hands facing forward. We're not squeezing our hands. This is a really soft grip. Both of our hands are, are, are almost, you can even keep your hands open for uh, a lighter connection. So we're making sure that we've got straight arms. We're looking for alignment, so wrists are aligned with the shoulders are as much as possible. You can straighten your body in the face you your sweet This is very much uh, the shape that we did on the ground not long ago. Now, here's the challenge. Can you lift your right knee to your chest? Same side. And that, uh, yeah. And really push into each other in, your, in order to maintain tension. I'm going to see if you can shift up without changing the body shape so much. Great. Once you've done three on one side, you'll, you'll do the other side. So this is a great way of communicating visually. Uh, maybe you can't know, like, be showing signs of absolute terror in their face. <laughs> and if they are, maybe you might need to back off. <laughs> So we actually have one more challenge to add on. If the last one was enough for you, you're welcome to stay there. Otherwise, you can take one step back. And this is the counterbalance. So you both have to push into each other. If one of you bends your your elbows, you're not going to be supporting your partner. So support each other by pushing into each other. Then lift the opposite knee this time. Good. And you probably have to feel your arms activating here as well, your core. And last one. And it's also a lot to do with the movement together. So we're doing that at different times. We may want to communicate with each other, whether it's visually or actually talking to each other, will really help. So the next one, this is our last warm up. I, I, I bet you're already feeling quite warm, but we're just going to add one more thing. And it's again, so that you can embody the, the qualities that we'll be teaching you today. And it's really about shifting your weight from side to side. So you'll find a squat position. I know it's everyone's favorite. And in your squat, can you shift to one side so that your body doesn't essentially change all that much, but you can actually lift one foot up? And this is very, very, very slight. Then you shift to the other side. Good. Now we're going to be doing this on somebody's feet. If you're a flyer, you'll be supported on your sit bones. So imagine you're, there's a foot that you would be sitting so that your other hip and your other foot can be free. One more time on each side. And then last one. You have to balance it out. <laughs> Good. Okay. Great. So we're going to build a little bit of trap. If you've never done acro yoga before, a lot of what we do is so much about communication and trust. So this drill, this next drill, is going to just help you to elevate that trust and that meaning. So many needs to be lying on the floor. And here, what's really nice is Pip is actually going to be holding my weights. When I'm sitting back, just slowly, delicately, leaning me out to the ground. My feet find her hips, and it's the slightest external rotation that I'm finding of the feet, and her hip bone are in the bottom of my foot. So my feet are uh, hip resistant part here, I'm rolling the shoulders back and down, and I'm straight the body. And here I'm trapping melody a lot. So this is super easy for both of us, we've done this before, but potentially we might want to start very, very small, maybe steps, and then the more you do it, the, the bigger you can expand into a deep in there. So I think how can help Pip feel uh, more confident in me 
it is moving slowly. If I release my knees really quickly, it's not going to feel safe here. But I'm really, I'm pushing to receive. And then I'm slowly extending my leg. Maintaining a nice neck bend. So, nice to start with, also, you look nice to way better. We want to communicate. This again might be visually by facial expressions or to also talk to each other. So, meditate can be a little bit more resistance. If you're struggling with, uh, with your pushing up, you can also use your hands as a system. When the knees come into your chest, you can use your hands to push up and support your flyer that way. One last little thing is that there's a call in the safe of that. And the thing that we tend to do is to arch. We naturally want to help as, uh, as human beings. So, um, we just want to think about almost drawing the standing into the, into the chest a little bit. We want to hollow, so more in ribs in, so we can maintain that strength in the body. What we don't want to do is help inspire that. <laughs> Looks beautiful, but not exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna, so how this is gonna move forward is now you're gonna have the option to pause the video so you can go ahead and try as many reps as feels good in your body. Once you have embodied this uh, movement, then you can press play again and you can continue with the tutorial. All right, so we'll move on and we're gonna start with actually going into the front side. So my hand is forward. And my hands are externally rotated. This is the same thing that we practice in our standing warm up. And just straighten up on me. Make sure that the weight goes in second. So, the common mistake here for the base is when you are receiving, you are extending the leg uh, over the head. And what we were looking for is to bend the knees and to extend the, the ankles over the hips. So this is the moment we were working before. This is where we scoop at the bottom, and now I'm just extending the leg up, stacked ankles over my hips. Here, I'm just uh, lifting the legs, so I'm really active in the legs. And I'm able to push into my knees hand. And see, both of our hands are soft here. Sometimes when you're learning, you tend to want to hold on to your flyer because it feels safer. But it, it, it's a lot nicer on, on both of our hands <laughs> to keep us off the ground. So one more tip, um, I think this is the most important thing, and especially as a, when you are beginning, is you want to be, you want to be pushing into each other and not pulling. So in order to not pull hip into the bird position or in the front plank, I have to bend my knees until I feel her hands. This way she can maintain her shape. Once I have that, then we can both extend together. So it's just like building a house or a structure. If it's slightly wonky, it's going to fall down. So we're just looking for those straight lines, vertical lines. And if you are feeling it in your hamstrings or the base, what do you think you do the other Feeling it in the hamstrings yeah. and the base. You can support your lower, your lumbar spine by rolling a mat and putting it at, at the lumbar spine. Okay, we'll just, we'll just check that to say that. Uh, yeah, you can just roll the mat. And make it under my knees safely. This is supportive. Sometimes it makes it a little bit harder to stabilize. So play around if it feels better for you. Then, um, then, then please uh, use this as a tool. Otherwise, uh, working on your flexibility will <laughs> will be even better. <laughs> so just remember to take it slow, and we're gonna advise you to pause the video, maybe spend a couple of minutes on it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Again, I'm pushing up to help support Pip. <laughs> so um, for me to be able to let go of the hands, what do you think we're going to have to do to enable us to let go of the hands? So potentially, if I just let go now, my body's going to come forwards. So Melanie is going to sh show what she's going to do. So I'm pointing my toes towards the sky, essentially as if you're driving a vehicle and you're trying to go a little bit faster. So it's the same mechanic. And I'm pushing up. And really, as the base, 
I have that much control over how to help a support Pip in her position. Here, I'm lifting my chest and I'm looking to where I'm going. We can look down, but it just means that the energy is going down. So we're going to look up and arms can either be by the side or just by the side of the legs. Again, in case you didn't catch how to lift uh, your flyer's chest up, you want to point up. And so explore with this range and see what happens to the positioning of your flyer. So have a go and pause the video and come back when you're ready. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> So here we're going to be exploring shift of weight. This is very much what we worked on for our warm up. So here what I'm doing is I'm thinking about I'm lifting one of the hips. And I'm really thinking about also pushing into Melanie's hands. So when I'm I'm feeling pip transfer the weight, I can uh, help communicate that by squeezing that hand. That means I want her to shift onto that side. Once she does shift to that side, I want to stabilize that leg. So the tendency is for the leg to want to move that way because we're shifting the weight onto that leg. So I want to anticipate that as a base and keep hugging it as much as I can. <laughs> so a little cheat for the flyers. If, if you're finding that it's difficult to keep your legs together, you can also almost hinge a leg a little bit. So Whichever uh, foot Melanie's going to take out, you can also drop the foot that's on the hip. Drop the leg that... <laughs> the foot that's on the hip, that's a leg you drop. <laughs> so again, as a base, always remember to push, as particularly in this movement, because you're shifting the weight, the tendencies want to pull onto each other. So do your best to avoid that and keep pushing down. It is a bit of a diagonal uh, pressure. So if we're shifting to either hip, you're going to want to push more onto the other one. But again, no pulling at any time. Yeah. So have a go and pause the video and come back when you're ready. Tiger curl. <laughs> Let's go. So everything we've done on the ground, we're now bringing it into the air. So we've been working on shift of weight. If we're finding that this is nice and sturdy and steady, then the fly can think about bringing the knee to the chest. And everything is nice and slow. So we're almost thinking that it's slow motion. So notice my arms, they're not completely straight. I'm actually shifting onto one side so I can bend the other elbow. One last little thing for the flyer, just keep active in the legs. So if we start dropping, especially here, if we start hinging the leg, then the weight's going to go that way and it will be difficult for the base. So as a base, a good way to also, again, I'm going to repeat myself, but really there's a lot of value, especially in your practice as you're beginning. A good way to avoid pulling is if you keep your hands open, then you can really let the flyer hold on to you. And then it's sort of like your, your safety mechanism where you can't actually hold on to pull down. So you're, you're continuously supporting uh, the energy up. So know that if something's not working right now, that you can always take a step back. It might not necessarily happen straight away. So just know that maybe today this is enough and you can use this video um, tomorrow to um, go a little bit further. Again, for safety purpose, every step should feel as if you're walking. It's that familiar in your body. And take the time uh, calibrating this in your duo so that it really feels like second nature before continuing. With that said, stop the video, pause the video, have some fun, and we'll see you in a moment. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so this is um, possibly the most, um, I would say, confusing, perhaps, <laughs> transition uh, for, of, the, of this uh, series. 
So here we've done our tiger toe curl. We bring the knee to the chest. Now, Pip, while Pip is in this position, my foot, it goes, if you have the flexibility, you can go into internal rotation. That means the toes face the middle of uh, your center and your heel goes out. If you don't, then you can kind of stay neutral, but you're going to find the underside of the thigh. Just for the fly, you want to create just a little bit of space so the base can place the foot just under the hamstring. Once we have this connection, then Pip will open her knee out to the side and then finding the hook behind my calf. So I really want to hook with the toe because that helps to create stability. Once we have this, she shifts over and I anticipate that weight by pushing up with my leg and then same thing, knee into chest. I find the same foot position and internal rotation, and then we open together. Now, this is the most important part, bases. Keep your arms straight and bend your legs. I'm going to say it one more time because not, this is not natural. <laughs> Keep your arms straight and bend your legs. This will help your flyer sit up. So here, I just want to sink down, relax, and just imagine that you're on an elevator. And again, the same way we work bird, you can help support your flyer up to extend your legs by using your hands on your knees and that adds an extra element of stability. So as a flyer, we don't need to be too wide in the legs. We can bring the legs in slightly. It obviously depends on flexibility. But if we're feeling quite scared, the tendency is to bring the legs in and, and we come up. So we just want to really relax here and say good things to ourselves as well as to our base. I trust my base. I trust Melanie and I trust myself. <laughs> So the same way we went up is the same way we come down. So I extend my, my arms and I bring Pip to me. It makes it a lot easier and safer for Pip in that way. I'm being really, really patient until we have hand connection. Now we shift to one side. I'm telling Pip to shift to this side by slightly squeezing the hand. So I shoot the leg behind me and just offer the hip. Then shifting to the other side and making your way onto, uh, back to your front plank. <laughs> so there's a lot of information there um, something that you might want to go back on uh, before you start trying this also if you don't have an extra person a spotter that helps to keep this kind of thing safe just go super slow today so again the, the hardest uh, thing to conceptualize in the beginning is where and adds a flyer. So that's why we're making it very clear between us that Pip brings her knee to her chest into this tiger curl. And then I find again it's an internal rotation of my foot just behind underneath um, the, the hamstring. And then we open the knee together. And when you can keep these sections clear, it makes it look less like us looking for the wrap and, and, and a lot clearer to see where, where, we're, where, where our intention is and where we're trying to take it. So on that note, pause the video and come back when you're ready. We're going to add on. So it's now going to turn into a slight sequence. Don't feel like you need to do everything today. Um, we'll see when All right, so we've gone into the straddle frame and now we're looking at frame also known as chair. I'm going to reach for Pip's foot. So this can actually be slightly scary for the client. So I can re re almost relax a bit here. You can see if I'm reaching for it, it makes it a little bit uh, safer again for Pip because she can feel that I'm already there supporting. Um, again, I'm keeping an open palm and my hands are facing out and I'm supporting underneath the foot. So here I'm going to need to shift my weight onto the other foot. So I can press into the hand of my other hand on just a little bit. And when Pip does this, if it feels like a lot of strain, you can bend your opposite knee just slightly so that you can be dealing with stability. And then my other foot is placed underneath your sit bones and it should imagine hip, imagine your ankle was a chair so you really want to be supportive uh, on the hip and so you're kind of placing it a little bit um 
maybe midpoint of the of the hamstring. And it's exactly on the other, the same on the other side. So it can be a little bit scary to release the foot, but you know that your face, you know that melody's there. So again, here, I'm not bending my knees. You, this is what your body's going to want to do, faces, because it, it's like you're helping. But really, you're going to be much more uh, helpful if you keep the arms extended. And if you have the flexibility to also keep your legs extended. And I actually forgot to mention that ideally, you, again, you want to have your ankles stacked over your hips, especially in these poses. So one little thing also, as a flyer, we can help by bringing the legs in distance apart. It's so easy for us to want to 